The drumbeats of a war on Syria are growing louder. Israel now appears to be laying the groundwork for a possible military attack. An Israeli deputy minister says he is concerned about the chemical stockpiles in Syria. Ayub Kara says these chemicals could fall into the wrong hands or even be used by Damascus to launch an attack against Israeli forces. And that argument is being used to justify a preemptive strike on Syria, even if it means triggering a broader regional conflict. Washington used a similar excuse to attack Iraq back in 2003, falsely claiming that Baghdad possessed weapons of mass destruction. Webster Griffin Tarpley is an author and historian. He's joining me now live from Washington to share his thoughts with us. Uh, Mr. Tarpley, welcomed. In her press conference on Monday, the spokesperson for the United States Department of State, Victoria Newland, predicted that there would be at least three more new massacres, she said, in Syria. And she also knew the locations of these would-be massacres. At the same time, an Israeli deputy minister, Ayub Kara, as we just mentioned, has said that Syria might use its chemical weapons against Israeli forces. What do you make of these comments, and are they the groundwork for a possible military attack? Uh, they are very ominous, and what we've seen now is that NATO is obviously planning these, these massacres. In the last couple of days, we've had both the unfortunate Mrs. Newland as well as Anders Fogh Rasmussen, the Secretary General of NATO, comparing Syria to Bosnia with the obvious implication that NATO may do a unilateral, uh, outside of the UN Security Council, uh, bombing attack. The response to that came quite quickly. Uh, Nizavisimaya Gazeta of Moscow writes that Putin has ordered preparations for two Russian divisions, a, a paratroop division as well as an infantry division, plus a Spetsnaz brigade of the Black Sea forces who have a base in Tartu, Syria, to prepare. At any time, the sovereign governor, government of Syria could obviously invite these Russian forces to come in, and this would not be a violation of anybody's international law. In addition, I would call attention to the report from my friend Thierry Maison in Damascus that sometime in the next week, perhaps Friday, we may be dealing with an attempted brainwashing of the world through the CIA and NATO. It is an operation reportedly being planned by Ben Rhodes. Ben Rhodes is a resident, mini Goebbels here, in the Obama White House, he wrote Obama's speeches, the Cairo speech, the West Point speech, uh, declaring war on Pakistan. He is a demagogue and a propaganda technician. And what he's put together is an international operation with a couple of uh, meetings that have gone on. Uh, they've got Nile Sat and Arab Sat apparently willing to play along with NATO. They've had a first meeting in Doha. This was for uh, the... Um, basically reporting this coup to the world, that would be with the participation of Al Arabiya, Al Jazeera, BBC, CNN, Fox, France 24, Future TV, and MTV. Right. So that's the external part. For the inside, they have fake versions of Barada, Future TV, MTV, Orient News, Kham, and Syria Al Khad that would broadcast lying propaganda. And in Doha and in Saudi Arabia, they have built sets, Hollywood sound, sound stages in effect, that duplicate the presidential palace in Damascus as well as downtown Damascus, downtown Aleppo, downtown Homs. It reminds us of what they did last year with creating the green square of Tripoli, Libya in well, Qatar. Well, Mr. Tarpley, so is, is, is as you are operation. referring there to what you think are the reasons for a military strike being planned, and again, you refer there to the Russia being largely on the defensive over the crisis in Syria. It's vetoed the U.S.-led motions of the U.N. Security Council. So basically, do you think that it, however, has got the power to stop this from happening? Well, that's what we're now going to see. Uh, obviously, the presence of Putin is a deterrent. Uh, he will respond to an attack on Syria. No one knows how. I would also point out that this operation is fraught with peril for Obama. His White House now with this uh, Ben Rhodes is being used to plan an operation which will lead inevitably to the massacre of large numbers of Christians, right? Twenty percent of the population are Christians. These Wahhabites from Saudi Arabia that are going to be leading the charge with some kind of an internal coup 
uh, right. are known to be sharpening their knives for the Alawites and for the Christians. And at that point, of course, you'd expect the, uh, the protests to come from the Vatican in Rome, but the Obama White House has also covered that angle. Cass Sunstein in the Obama White House is reported to, to be the mastermind of the so-called Vatican Spring, the attack on the Vatican to suppress the response right. of the Vatican. I wonder how Obama thinks he's going to campaign for re-election uh, on the basis of a, of a bloody massacre of the Christians and others in Syria and call that some kind of a, uh, a liberation. So with okay. all this, we are now on the verge of a great power confrontation. Thank you very much, Mr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, author and historian, joining us there live from Washington with his comments.